Hi, I'm Kathy Goodson, and thank you for buying a home sign. I want to show you how to make your sign. This is just a little short video to show you how to do your home sign. I want to show you the finished sign. This one is a 14 and a half inch board. I painted it with white chalk paint first. And then I used my stencil, which you will get an H, an M, and an E. You will leave a space for the O. Um, this one's a little short. You might want to make it just a little bit longer. Then. When you get your kit, the board does not come with it, but you do get a bag with three stencils and a sponge. You'll get 12 little wooden pieces, and you'll get Velcro for the wooden pieces and then Velcro for your board. The first step is you'll want to paint your sign. This is, I'm using DIY chalk paint or it's actually clay-based paint, or you could use any kind of, this would do, this is folk art. You could use acrylic, but any kind of paint will do. You wanna paint. Now your board is not included in your kit, because that would make it so expensive to ship. If you're doing local pickup, I'll be happy to provide a board too. You can buy this kit at in my Etsy shop, Goods and Vintage. Or you can message me if you're local to the Lincolnton, North Carolina area. And you can do a pickup at just around the corner in Lincolnton, North Carolina. Okay, now let's let that dry. Once your board is dry, you'll want to stencil it. I'm going to use just some black acrylic paint. This is just folk art acrylic. And you won't need much, just a little bit of paint. You have a sponge in your kit. You wanna take your sponge and dip it in your paint. And if you see wet paint on the bottom, like that's too much. You see that? You wanna dab it off. You wanna take your letters and decide where you want them. H, no O. H down first. You might want to put a little painter's tape down to hold it. I'm just going to stencil mine. And you just want to dab holding your stencil or keeping your stencil tape down. Be careful on the edges. You do not want to go over. You have to paint over and fix it. It's not the end of the world, but you would have to fix it. Okay, and it's not dark enough, you can go back over it. Notice I did not have to dip back in my paint even one time. You don't want bleed through. And that's bleed through. Yeah, I can fix that with paint bleed through because I use too much paint. So don't do what I do, do what I say not to do. If you get bleed through, you can fix it when it dries. Okay, I'm gonna put my E on this end, about the same distance. I'm gonna dip in my paint. You can tape it down again or you can just hold it. You wanna dab lightly. See if I can go a little lighter this time.
careful not to stamp over the edge. This board is longer. Again, you might want to tape it. I'm going to hold mine like I'm crazy. All I used for that is that little squirt of paint. Stress it. Now I have a little spot. I'm going to patch that up. It's not dry yet. Okay, you want to use your same white paint and touch up any spots where you bled through or smeared it. And I put a couple extra ones in there for you too. And then you want to paint each one of your pieces. And I'm going to show you each piece and how I painted it. This is a little snowman, I just did white, then a little scarf, black. You might wanna do his arms brown. I did mine black, well no, I did mine brown. And then the little eyes, you use the back of a paintbrush. You just paint his nose, and then use a smaller paintbrush to do the little face. Okay. For February, I just did the heart white. And then I painted the red inside. You can do dots. You can do all kinds of things with that one. For March, we have the shamrock. In this case, I just painted it green. And then I used the back of my paintbrush to do dots. And I just used acrylic paints. I just used the regular apple barrel, folk art. And I used another set, another brand. I used the Palmer. Just some random paint that I had, random acrylic paint. April. Let's see, April, April. Oh, bunny rabbit. April is the bunny rabbit. In my case, I just wanted a little white bunny. Then I did a little pink on the tail, a little pink on the nose, pink in the ears, a little nose and mouth, eye, and a little feet. For May, I think about spring and flowers. So it's May, I have a little flower for you. I just did mine pinks and put a little different color pinks in it. Green with the yellow center. For June, I think of the beach in June. So for June, I did a dolphin paint this I first just I just used a light gray on his back I mixed a little white with gray for his for under his stump for his stomach area a dot for an eye a little darker gray on the fin at the top and the tail fins for July I did a butterfly and he is a little big so if you want to make your board a little bigger I like to put him sideways so and I just painted him orange, then I went back and did the black around the outside and the black for his body, and then I just did a couple black dots on it. You could do a lot of things with the butterfly. For August, I just did a colorful rooster. 
This is easy to paint. I just painted him yellow first. Then I went back over it with blues, greens, turquoises, and feather shapes. I just kept going over it. Then the last thing I did was I painted some black over it. Did the yellow feet and the red on his head and his yellow on his beak and a dot for his eye. Just feathering with just different colors. September, start thinking of fall. Although here in the South, we don't really get fall that early. And I just did this similar to the way I did the rooster. I painted it yellow first, and then I just took fall colors of oranges and reds, and I painted some veins in with brown and painted the stem brown. For October, I did a pumpkin. I painted it two different colors of orange and just swirled them together in lines like a pumpkin has, then the stem green, and then a little twirly green. For November, I first painted the, pump, the turkey brown, then I went back and I feathered in some lighter browns. On this part of his feathers, I feathered them down, yellow on his feet, red on his head, little dot for his eye, and that thing that hangs on their neck, whatever it's called, and some blue on his back, because if you look at a turkey, a lot of times they have colors on them. You can do a turkey in fun colors if you want to, too. You don't have to do them just natural. Of course, it's whatever you want to do. And then I love the tree in the circle. And it is a little big, but I don't, that doesn't bother me. You might want to spread yours out a little more. This is the, I did the Christmas tree in green, and then I just did the end of the paintbrush again with colors, and I did gold around it. Now there's an easy way to put your Velcro on the back. Here's one that doesn't have it yet. So you want to take your Velcro pack that has the, the most of the same kind in it, and you want to place it upside down like it would be Wrong side. That's fuzzy. Okay, you want to place it on your dot as it would be if it was on the piece. And then decide where you want your piece. I like my turkey right there. And then press it down really hard. And when you pull it off, it'll be stuck to the back of your piece. I'll show you that little technique again. That's just an easy way to do it. And you'll get it right exactly where you want it. You don't have to guess. So you want the sticky side up. Decide, I'm gonna turn him, I like him to have a little attitude. Turn him a little bit. Press it hard and pull it up. Put your piece down, sticky side up. Decide where you want your object and pull it up. Works really well. It's already done. It's already done. I think this one needs it. for the board, your Velcro piece for the board. And your little sign is ready to use. You want to put some hooks on the back. I used eye hooks. extra one of these in in case that you want to move it or you mess it up. That's all it is to it. 